Okay, what is this prayer teaching us? Number one, boom. God wants us to pray for our personal physical needs. You know, a lot of people think that's unspiritual. Did you know what this middle of the prayer is? God said it's okay to pray for personal, for physical needs. Every day, we're supposed to talk with God as our Father about our, person, our daily bread, what we need to make it through that day. Now, you know you have a friend if they feel comfortable talking about real life. And God says, I want to be like that. Secondly, this teaches us God wants us to pray for things that seem small and insignificant. A lot of people think, oh, I just can't pray because I don't. You listen to some of those prayers, and they're so elevated, you almost hardly can't even understand them. And they're so, oh, theological. God says, hey, it's okay to pray for small and insignificant things. Remember, he's the one that says, I, I, I have numbered the hairs on your head, and I know every time a sparrow falls. Uh, literally, what that verse where Jesus said that means, it says a sparrow hops. Jesus knows every time a bird hops. Have you ever watched birds? They don't, well, you know, penguins waddle, but normal birds hop between things. They're, they're just so energetic. They go boop, 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 boop. Jesus said, I'm aware of every hop of every bird everywhere, and I've numbered your hair. And it's okay if you want to pray for things that seem small and insignificant because I'm listening. Thirdly, God wants us to need him. Now, this is where it gets hard. God wants us to need him to get along each day. Do you know what the greatest days of parenting were when I look back at our eight children? The days when we would be somewhere and we'd be walking along and I would feel that hand going, and they were, they were trying to, the kids were trying to find my hand because they wanted to hold it, because they were a little unsure about, you know, they saw a dog over there or they saw, you know, heard something loud over there. And, and we would be walking along and you'd feel that, that hand bumping you because they want it isn't me grabbing their hands and saying, hold on to me, stop running around. It's them going, I need you. I'm afraid. I'm unsure. You see, God wants us. He's the one that wants us to need him. And this middle petition, the, the very center, verse 11 of the Lord's Prayer, is our declaration, I need God. Now, how often do you tell him that? Well, it depends on how insulated you are. See, we insulate ourselves in every way. I mean, with the security systems of our homes and with our finances and with everything that we do so that we have, we kind of keep needs or, or anything that would make us feel insecure at bay. And God said, hmm. My desire is that you constantly need me. Well, God wants us to pray for our personal physical needs, pray for things that seem small and insignificant. He wants us to need him to get along each day. But look, <laughs> wait a minute, what is, what is that, that 11th verse? Give me this day my daily bread. Is that what it says? No, what does it say? Us. Look at this. See, this is the second thing that's really hard for Americans. Now, I don't have to preach this. I, uh, I've had the benefit of, I mean, speaking in many parts of the world, one of the most fascinating is it, in the old communist world, you know, behind the Iron Curtain, uh, traveled there a lot, you know, 78 and 79 through 83, and then we got started with a ministry in Russia at one of our churches with Slavic Gospel Missions, and so I would preach in Russia a lot. Did you know over there... They were so poor under the communism uh, before the wall fell. If you were a Christian, your kids couldn't go to college. You couldn't be a professional. They had all these rules in communism for Christians. And so those people over there were resigned to the fact that as a Christian, they would never get ahead financially. Their kids would never excel scholastically. And so what they did is they excelled at being Christians. I remember... Uh, I was speaking at a church in Poland, and they said to me, uh, this is in the 70s, and they said to me, uh, church service starts at 8, but we have communion at 7. I thought, 
yeah, I've been to many churches where the staff meets and prays. I, it, I, I thought it was a little private group, and we're going to have communion to ask the Lord to really bless the day. I got there at 7. There were 500 people. In Poland in 1978, okay? I mean, we're talking about under total communism. And I just, I was amazed. And I said, what is it? They said, we live in community with other believers. If there is any service, we all come. We don't, it's kind of like Thanksgiving dinner. The family members that, that boycott that really aren't close, right? They, the family comes. They said church is the gathering of the family, and we live in community. I'll never forget that either, because they serve communion with what we would call a goldfish bowl. You know, one of those big glass that you have guppies in? That was the cup. And they took it, and 500 people went like this. We passed it from, it took an hour to do this. Took it, you handed the person next to you, they got it, and they went. And everyone in silence were praying and worshiping the Lord as the fishbowl went around 500 people. God wants us to live in community with other believers. Okay, let me just tell you another lesson I learned. You know, a lot of times we don't see God at work because we don't need to see him at work. 